excited to talk to you about organizing for productivity. Believe it or not, when we ask you what is your biggest sewing frustration or challenge, this topic is the number one thing that's brought up or asked about. And for me personally, it's probably my biggest area that I need to work on. I'm pretty good about making outfits and attention to detail and stuff like that, but when it comes to being organized and having my stuff put away so that when I'm working on a project, I can easily find what I'm looking for, that is where it all falls apart for me. So I think that throughout this month, it's gonna be really fun to kind of go through the journey together. We'll learn from each other and really start to apply some of these ideas into our own spaces and then really come to a point where we're super productive. So to kick it off, I'm gonna take you on a tour of my at-home sewing studio. We started this business in 2008, and since then we've moved several times. So my space has kind of evolved as we've moved into different houses. But when we first started, the space that I sewed in was my formal living room in my house. It was an open room, there was no doors, there was no walls, and so I had to set up when I wanted to sew and then clean up when I was done. And that produces its own challenges right away. It's very hard to work on a project, at least for me, to work on something and not finish it and actually have to clean it all the way up. I find that when I do that, I, I lose my flow, the thought process, I'm, it's hard for me to remember where I'm at, what, what it is I'm trying to accomplish or where I left off. And if I stick it in a drawer somewhere, I'm very visual, so I'll forget that I even had that project going and sometimes start over or look for those same supplies somewhere else. I'm pretty sure that's a common challenge that most of us face. Not everybody has a specific designated sewing room with a door that you can close and nobody else will go into. My current space does have a door. It's a fairly small room. It's about maybe eight by eight. And I've kind of just worked through that room to set it up as functionally as possible but I still have challenges. I still have a hard time getting work done in there. It's pretty clean right now, but generally I have stuff everywhere. It's hard to see the floor. I never go in there without shoes on because I'm afraid there's pins on the floor, stuff like that. So I'm gonna take you on a tour of that room and show you how I have it set up right now. And then as the month progresses, I'll show you some of the things that I've tried to make things even more functional or easier to sort through, see, and organize. All right guys, so here we are in my house and I'm gonna have you follow me on into my sewing room. Come on, let's go. First, I'll just give you a quick span of how the space is laid out. I have my desk right here under the window where I'll either work on my computer or do some sewing. Then as we spin over here, you can see I have a whole wall of some storage and organization. Now as we take a look over here, this is the wall that was above my desk and you can see I have this like filing wall unit that I have right there. So it sits right above my desk, right above where I'm sewing. And then I just use this to keep patterns that I'm in process or currently working on. So I have probably a dozen different patterns in there and I'll have cut pattern pieces or if I've started, I'll have a few sample items in there with those. And I keep those in those slots right next to me, clearly labeled so they're easy for me to find. And then over here I have thread, and I have a lot more thread than this in a jar as well, but this is just thread on the wall, and I have these bins here that I keep magazines and um, catalogs from companies that I like for just inspiration of either design ideas or like how I'm putting together a book or a pattern or something like that. Then I have this unit right here hanging on the wall that I got at Ikea, and it's designed for a kitchen. I believe, but I use it on my wall. It's hanging right next to my sewing machine. And then in these little bins, I can keep things like scissors or smaller pieces of elastic. This one's pretty messy, but here I have some different laces and elastics, and then I have more of that right there. But you could use these for anything, measuring tapes, scissors, pencils, just you know anything that you want quick access to. So I really like this um, organizing tool. And then as I continue to pan over here, you can see I have a whole wall where I keep all my fabric and some other storage items. And if I tilt back a little bit, you can see that this goes all the way up to the ceiling and then down to the floor. 
So this is how I have my fabric currently set up and stored. It's kind of for display, but it's also functional storage. So I've seen some other ideas on Pinterest and some products I've seen in the sewing catalogs or on Amazon where you um, have like a cardboard piece that the fabric wraps around and you can stack those standing tall and it's a much cleaner look for the fabric storage. So you can either buy those with, they come with slits in them and they hold the fabric tight or there's a few tutorials that can show you how to make these yourself and, and use that same method of fabric storage. So I think over the next few weeks, I'm gonna attempt a few different ideas like that, and then um, I'll post some pictures or update in the next video to get your feedback. But if you guys have ideas for fabric storage that could work in this space or fabric storage that you use in your own space, please go ahead and post those. This, I think, is a topic that everybody needs help with. Everybody who's doing this has too much fabric. And as you can see right here, this is my current dilemma. I have the fabric all up on my wall, but here I have uh, like four or five bags of fabric that are pretty full. And out in my garage, I still have a few clear bins, I think probably three or four that are full of fabric that I just, I can't get myself to throw away. But um, it's not something I use every day, so I don't have that in my sewing room with me. But this stuff right here is fabric that I know I will use. So I'm trying to think through how am I going to fit all of this into my existing wall area or do I have space to create a different setup for some fabric storage that can also be in here. One of the challenges that I have with a lot of the fabric that I have is that I get down to some pretty small pieces. But this, especially with doll clothes, this is still very usable. And these ones, like this is a great example. This is Liberty of London fabric. I'm not going to throw this away. But it's, you know, it's just about four inches wide. So it's hard for me to fold this and have this just folded on my shelf. This was another example. So this one's even a little bit smaller. I'm very, a very, very visual person. So for me, this storage needs to be out in the open in a clear container or somehow visible. So that right now is my current challenge and I'm gonna work on a way to figure out what to do with these pieces of fabric that are smaller to try to figure out the best way to have these stored either up on my shelves or somewhere else in my sewing room and then that way I can see them and access them and use them anytime I need them and I don't waste a lot of time digging through bags or boxes trying to find scraps of fabric. So if you have ideas for the best way to store fabric like this, please share them either in the comments under the blog post or in the Facebook group. It would be a huge help and I'm sure we can all learn the best way to do this type of thing from each other. Another question that I thought I'd ask is regarding fabric storage and display. How do you like to store your fabric? Do you think it's more helpful to have them sorted by color so they're easy to find when you know you're looking for a color? Or possibly to sort them by fabric type so you have all your knits folded in one area and then wovens and then maybe like the suede and the vegan leather type fabrics folded somewhere else. They could still be in color order but they're separated by type just so that it is easier to find when you know you're working on a specific project. I think I've gone back and forth and tried to kind of figure out which method works best for me. And um, as you can see right here, it's kind of migrated back to, they're sorted by color. It's a mix of different fabrics um, in each stack. So I have knits and wovens folded together, but they're set up by color here. So let me know. So post, a, post some comments below and let me know how you like to store your fabric or what you think makes it easier to find what you're looking for. And then on the back wall, which is back by my door, I have a kitchen island right here, which is what I use for my cutting table. And then above that, I have a bulletin board just for some examples and drawings and stuff like that that I'll put up on the bulletin board. And then here's a quick look at this kitchen island. It's pulled out from the wall and rotated. You can see down here, we've got wheels down on the bottom. So I can spin this around 
And then once I have it out in the middle of my room, I can extend the back there. So it gives me a large cutting surface. And this is counter height, not desk height. So it's the perfect height for cutting things out. So this is a great piece to have. And it gives me a little bit of extra storage in the front of this one as well. Now on the opposite side of my desk, I have another bookcase from Ikea that can either stand tall or sit sideways and you can fit cube size boxes inside each of these cube spaces. Mine right now is a little bit messy, <laughs> but it is what I use for stuff that I am storing that I'd like quick access to. I have binders that either have patterns or just office related stuff um, inside there, a freestanding filing box which is on there some other containers, some other boxes, and then it goes all the way up high too, so I have some stuff on top there. You can see some Barbie boxes, and in that other storage box, I have some other clothes items that I've made. And my iron slide, or my ironing board slides in right over there, and then I have another bookcase. This one also we got at Ikea. Has closed storage on the bottom, so I'll hide a bunch of stuff inside there. Usually, it's kind of a whole bunch of dolls that are not dressed and all that kind of stuff are behind those doors. And then I have these shelves as well, and these ones are pretty clean, they're pretty empty. Um, some office stuff, some magazines, the containers with the labels on them are clothes items for different size dolls. And then I have up in the basket above some clothes items as well, just in that storage basket. Uh, some extra thread, and then up above I have some fabric on a bolt and some nice leather um, pieces of fabric which are just laying flat up there so they don't get creased or folded. Then as I spin a little bit to the left, I do have a large open space on the wall next to that bookshelf. And then you can see right down here I have a pegboard that I'm gonna hang on that wall and I just was gonna use that as an example to show you guys how easy it is to make something like this and hang it on the wall. And then you can put all kinds of stuff on there um, sewing supplies, baskets, stuff like that. So we'll have that as a quick project right at the end of this video. Here's a cute example of a setup that we have at the Liberty Jane store. I used to have this rack set up in my office, but I moved it over here. Now this one you can get at places like Hobby Lobby or Michael's. The containers that are inside, some of them came next to it, designed the ones in the top row, designed to fit into those cubbies. For the other ones, I just searched around with the measurements of the different spaces and found some different clear glass jars to put things in like buttons and um, you could do like embellishments or little thread spools, containers of snaps, um, uh, eyelets, stuff like that. Anything that's small that you could have separated into little jars. And so then the ones that you see kind of down on that fourth row have the chalkboard label on them. So then you can easily label them um, depending what's in there and then you could switch them out if needed and change that label. The bottom row on this one also has a nice little holder for ribbon. So if you wanna have ribbon um, on that pole, you can just slide it out and it will unwind and you can cut off the length that you need. So for somebody who's really visual, like myself, this is a great way to store items and add some cute kind of whimsical detail to your sewing space. Now we can take a closer look here at this wall unit. This room was designed with a cutback in this section of the wall. It was just about two feet deep, which worked pretty well for this whole setup that we found all these pieces at Ikea and put together and kind of built them into the wall. So at the ground level, you can see that I have these drawers. I have one on each end, that's the, the narrower width. And then in the center, I have these long flat ones, which I like for storing outfits and projects that are in progress because they're not very deep. So you can slide stuff in there um, as you're working on it, keep it nice and flat, and then you have quite a few drawers to work with. So then on top of that, we set a countertop, which was the exact length that we needed so I didn't need to cut that I bought that as is and then on top of that it was just three bookcases that we set side by side so we have two wide ones and then a narrower one in the center and they fit pretty close to the opening that we had here um, there was a few little gaps and we just used some flat one by like a one by three I think 
to um, cover the trim edges where the bookcase is met along the middle. And then along the top up at the ceiling, it's like a one by six that we ran along the whole top edge of the bookcases. So it filled the gap between the ceiling and it also acts as a brace. So the whole thing can't just tip over and fall over. Now let's take a look at the pegboard that I mentioned. So this one right here is about three feet wide by two feet tall. So it's a good size for storage and I'm gonna mount this up on the wall um, at standing height. So I just wanted to show you quickly um, how easy this is to make. I actually got this frame at Goodwill and took it out in my garage and I spray painted it. I took the picture out of it, spray painted it white, and then I got the pegboard um, at a store like Home Depot and then just cut it to fit inside this frame. So you can see now on the back side, this is what this looks like. And I ran a bead of glue on the inside of the frame when I set that in so it would secure it to the frame itself. Then we have command strips that we've taken and we've put on the corners. So you can see a command strip right here. And I've done all four corners. And then I'm gonna go ahead and use those on the wall. And we'll just push it right up against the wall. This has a weight limit. You can get command strips for different weights. So for what this is, it will hold stuff like scissors and little tools that are not that heavy. So this works really good and doesn't damage your wall and is pretty easy to move around if you don't get it hanging in the position that you like. Here you can see the command strip package and this is what I'm using. So on here it says that it holds up to 16 pounds. So that's plenty for what I'm gonna use it for. And then I'll just show you quickly how these work as well. When you open the package, you'll have them on a sheet and they tear apart from each other. And you can see on them, or see right here, this is like a Velcro product. So what they do is they lock together. And you can hear that. So as you snap those together, then you have two pieces right here snap together and that's what secures the wall side to the pegboard side. So I'll go ahead and I'll peel off one of the backings and I'll stick that to the pegboard. Now you can see on the pegboard I already have that applied. So then I'm just going to go ahead and peel off the sticker backing on the opposite side and it'll reveal another sticky side and that's the part I'm going to press up against the wall. Now I already have some lines marked on my wall so I know I have a level place to attach the pegboard. So now that I have all of that peeled off, I'm just gonna lift this up, I'm gonna match up my lines and I'm gonna press it against the wall. And I have that command strip is on the outside edge, not on the pegboard itself. So I just press that into the wall and that pegboard is now up on the wall. So I've got a bunch of hooks and different types of attachments for the pegboard. So I'm just gonna show you a few of those. You can have little hooks that just mount in wherever you would like, and you can set, like this one is set for a shelf. So you could set two of these on here, and then you'd have a narrow shelf that stretch across the top. If you wanted to use it for items that you wanted to hang up, like if it was for clothes that you had already made, you can use a hook that extends out a few inches and then you could hang your items on there and you could have a whole row of those um, if it was all the same shirt and you were stacking your inventory something like that now another one that i like is a basket product so if you have a basket like this you can have two hooks on here You could use this basket to hold larger items like fabric dyes or rolls of heat vinyl transfer product for your cutting machine, stuff like that. So these are a little bit bigger and it could store those nicely out of the way. You could take a rack like this that has a few prongs sticking out along the front and then on this one, if you had this on here, you could have a whole row of scissors or something like that that has an opening in it so that you could hang those along 
that as well. So there's many uses for the pegboard. You can configure it any way that you want. There's a lot of different accessories. If you just start searching that on Amazon, it's probably the easiest place. You can see all different kinds. Or Pinterest is a great idea. You can get tons of ideas, and I'll be sure to include a link to my Pinterest board, which has a lot of examples of different setups for some pegboards. The other great thing to remember is that you can make a pegboard any size. So like I mentioned at the beginning, if you have a frame, you can cut the pegboard to fit that frame. And so you could do that for anything and you can find frames really inexpensively at places like Goodwill or a garage sale or something like that. And you can spray paint them. And then you could have pegboards that were all different colors or different ideas like that. You could have like spray paint the whole thing so the whole thing's coral or a color that works with your room. And here I like to have white accessories because my walls are all blue, but there is a ton of opportunity to be creative and use those as an artistic expression um, as well as functional storage. I hope you've enjoyed this tour of my space and really honestly, I love your feedback. So if you have suggestions for some of the areas that I showed, please share them in the comments in the Facebook group. And if you have questions about your own space, share pictures and we can all work together to come up with solutions that will work for you.